to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I am reviewing my Fendi Mini Peekaboo. Now it's been a year since I purchased this Fendi Mini Peekaboo but for the purposes of this video I'm going to focus on the usability and pros and cons of the Fendi Mini Peekaboo in general. I will touch on wear and tear with regard to this particular bag given that it's also a white bag. However, you need to bear in mind that my wear and tear experience will be different because I have a larger bag collection than if I had a smaller bag collection. So it's just something important to note because the exposure this bag is getting is minimal considering that I rotate my bags every other day. So it's very rare that I would use the same bag for days on end, uh, except when I'm on holiday, which I did recently with my black Fendi Mini Peekaboo. This is the bag that started my channel. I did a fair bit of research on the Fendi Mini Peekaboo, and one thing that really drew me to this particular model, which is called the Celeria, because it is stitched on the outside. So all of the seams are exposed, they're glazed and hand stitched, as opposed to the Nappa version, um, this is the Romano leather version, so it's got quite a large pebbled um, leather on this one. The Nappa version is folded inside, so it's more like bubbly, I suppose, look like a bubble shape. I'll put a picture of that one up just so that you can see the difference. This is the one that drew me in for a few reasons. One, I um, by talking about it a lot on this channel I'm actually really getting to understand my style preferences and how I describe my style is done but undone and what I love about the Fendi Mini Peekaboo in the Celeria version is the options that you have to really dress this bag up or dress it down. So I'll talk about the two bags interchangeably from that perspective. As you saw in the thumbnail, I have two Fendi Mini Peekaboos, both in the Celeria. Um, it's fair to say that I would like more. I would like the blush pink uh, and I would like the lilac too. And I don't feel like that is um, repeating um, a style in my collection. I think this bag is that good to have it in multiple colors. So let me take you through the bag, an overview of the bag. A quick introduction to this bag. So first things first, this is the mini size. Fendi also have a um, medium and a large peekaboo in this style where there is a seam. They also have another peekaboo which is slightly bigger than the mini, smaller than the medium, which is called the Iconic essentially. And that one does not have the seam here. So uh, my good friend here, uh, Ada Solly, she bought the Iconic essentially. I'll insert a picture of her up here with her beautiful, like a blush nude, like a mushroom pink kind of bag. It's just, um, it's a beautiful color. So this is the small. Uh, sorry, this is the mini and it is the Celeria model in the Romano leather. Important to note, this style is a little more expensive than the Nappa styles. This style has one turn lock on the front and one on the back. It also has four feet. Uh, it has these two little sangles on either side that you can do up for a more refined look or you can undo for a little bit of a relaxed look. And you can guess which way I prefer to wear it. Each of the bags comes with a adjustable um, matching leather strap. This is the softest leather. It's really, really comfortable to wear and it has engraved Fendi hardware on the strap. A couple of other things that about this bag, each of the Celeria styles, so this style with the exposed stitching and glazing has a maker's mark on the inside. Now these are finished by individual artisans and there's a record of them um, with Fendi. They all have a unique number and that makes it a pretty special little bag to have. Now you can see I'm trying to train my bag to sag. I like a saggy looking bag. Um, a lot of people don't and I totally get that. But for me, the beauty of this bag is the fact that it has its own personality. Also included with the bag is a raincoat. Now, 
these raincoats um, I've not had to use it yet but it's such a great peace of mind it's like a silicone if you can see that fabric so it's such peace of mind just to be able to have this in your bag and if you are caught and you can't protect your bag you just whip this out and put it on and uh, yeah it's a super interesting talking point um, you can imagine and on the other side of the bag there is a slip pocket now these are raw finished bags so that is the back side of the leather leather blah, blah. this is the back side of the leather front i can't speak this is the back side of the leather front panel there so you can see just how meticulously this bag has been put together um, the middle section is, is not stiff um, it is you know you can it is quite pliable but um, at the top oh. but at the top there is this um, metal kind of reinforcing um, bracket that holds the middle section together and it's where each of the turn locks um, live so you can see just there each of the turn locks has Fendi and there are four little screws that hold that piece of hardware on the top handle is really interesting. What I discovered after a few months of having this bag is the fact that the top handle can collapse. So if you see here where the handle um, connects to the hardware, you can literally push that down for storage. So there's like a little hinge and if you um, put your handbags in shelving units like I do here, you can pop that top handle down and it makes it much easier to store your peekaboo if you don't have a lot of room. So that's kind of the overview of the bag. I really love it. Like I can't wait for it to start sagging a little bit more. That's a time thing. Um, there's not much you can do about it. But um, it's always great to note though that you can um, buckle it back up again with these little sangles if you don't want that particular look. There you have a structured bag again. So let me take you through some of the wear and tear that I've noticed in having this bag for a year, however it's been rotated. One of the things I'm really glad to say is I've had no colour transfer. And yes, I've been careful about where I have worn this bag, but ultimately on the leather, there is no colour transfer. Where I have noticed some colour transfer has been on the stitching at the top of the bag, which is interesting to me. So when I reviewed it for this video, you can see how this stitching is quite light and then it gets a bit dark along here. Um, and I think that that is colour transfer. It's just faint, but it is a bit darker. In terms of the hardware, there are minimal scratching on the hardware considering that it bangs against each other and if you're someone that uses a turn lock all the time you're obviously going to get um, turn marks on there I mean that's part of having the bag but in any case if I can show you a close-up of this you probably won't be able to see anything to the naked eye there's just a little bit here um, but I'm sure that would buff out too. So the hardware is really robust. It's not sensitive and delicate like that. All of my glazing is intact, um, which is fantastic given what we know about glazing from other houses. Um, and all of the stitching is nice and tight and secure, which is also really gives you a great peace of mind. In terms of glazing, there might be a slight issue, so I'll show you inside of this little hole that attaches to the sangle. You can just see that the glazing is kind of cracked off because of how small that little hole is and how much it's required to um, be manipulated in order to get over it, if you watch that. So you can see there, it's not something that you'd probably recommend doing all the time. But Fendi do have a great aftercare service. So if you did do any damage, they're happy to take the bag back in and take it to the spa and fix it up for you, which is also a great peace of mind. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons associated with this bag. Uh, it's fair to say that I'm a massive fan of this bag and there are a few reasons why. There are 12 adjustments on this strap. So this bag is size inclusive and I love that about a bag. One of my key pet peeves about Chanel is the fact that their straps 
don't work for everybody. And so if you have your heart set on a bag and you haven't seen it before and then you finally get information on a strap drop or you try it on and it looks ridiculous, it's a heartbreaker. Fendi are really good like that. One of the issues that I have about the straps though, and you can see the beautiful detail here, is there's no swivel here. And so when you clip this onto your bag, like so, if you find, if you've clipped it on just randomly, like I have now, and you go to put it on and it's twisted, like it is, see how it's twisted there? Then you have to unclip it and adjust it, or you've got to cope with the twist. So usually that is a little bit of an issue from my perspective, if that, um, you know, just is annoying when you've got other bags that do have that little swivel on the, um, on the clasp. You can see that I've got this on a shorter length for um, shoulder wear, and the amount of strap that is left, even though there is a little band here. Imagine that you've got this on the shortest setting possible. Actually, let's not imagine, I'll show you. So now we're on the shortest setting possible. You can see here that this is all hanging out past that little band to hold it in. And so the reality is that that'll probably flip up and be a pain. Um, so if you had this bag in particular with all of the stitching, you couldn't just chop it off. You'd have to get it altered so that the stitching continued around in a um, continuous fashion. So just something to be mindful of with the strap. But whilst we're on straps, it's not that Fendi can't do a pivot strap. In actual fact, they do do the pivot option on the baguette, but also on the aftermarket straps. So... I purchased this strap when I bought my black peekaboo and you can see here how this one pivots okay whereas these ones are fastened so there's no pivot there and what you want is a strap that does that so it moves with you and it's easy to adjust one of the key things that I love about the peekaboo is the ability to customize it so we can just snap these straps on and yes I don't have matching hardware because I prefer palladium hardware um, but it doesn't bother me because to me it's um it's about the strap nobody if anyone's looking that close goes oh your hardware doesn't match well too bad so sad i love it now this instantly takes this sweet little summer bag into something that is quite edgy which i really really enjoy about fendi these straps are not cheap, but you can see how adjustable this is. So I think I've got this on about a meter length and I think it goes to a meter 20. Um, and you can actually wear it quite short as well. So it can still go way shorter than this. And this is just great for shoulder carry. So you can see here in a relatively plain outfit, and I'll do some mod shots later, the versatility that you have with these bags to make them go from day wear to evening wear to street wear, which is something the Peekaboo does in an unparalleled way to most other bags. Now, whilst we're speaking of personalizing our bags, you might have seen my unboxing video from earlier this year, which is the Fendi Defender cover. I purchased this pre-loved from Fashion File and um, boy does this thing pack a punch. So I'll put that on my black peekaboo. But before I do, can I just show you how beautiful this bag is? It has a gorgeous matte black leather and the palladium hardware just pops off it. I think that this bag is the most beautiful black bag that I have ever seen. Now I have Chanel bags all around me and I still think this bag is the most beautiful. My Lady Dior nearly hit the chopping block, the exit lounge, because when I purchased this bag, I could not see how I could justify holding on to the Lady Dior. However, I've decided to keep it because it is a different bag, but this, this is me. Um, now it has all of the inclusions that the white bag has, but one special thing it has is a contrast interior in this beautiful tan. Um, and you know, you don't see it when you have the bag up. So that makes this bag much more suitable for evening. In my opinion, it's unlikely I'd take a white bag to an evening event unless it was a wedding that went from day to night. But, um, the black just takes it to another level. Now at the moment I've got it undone because I'm going to show you how I can transform this bag into a really edgy streetwear look. So we literally just pop it inside of the Defender like that 
and the Defender has these little loops that you thread the sangle through, so I'll do that. You can see here that the peekaboo sangles are threaded through the Defender cover. So now we can close it up. You can leave it open, it doesn't really matter because the Defender has little studs um, that you press to close it up. So here's the Defender, now I'll just close these studs up. So here we go. Now this bag looks totally different and I love it with the black handle. It's safely tucked in, so holding onto the bag like this and it's not going to fall out. It's not meant to have the, the turn lock come through. You can't really close it with the turn lock there. However, it does have the hole there and I'm not really sure why, but uh, when you look through it like that and it's open, it looks great and you can see the little Fendi shining through. So perhaps that's it, but like that's an attention to detail that you just didn't need. You could have just blocked that off. I love how it's got the Fendi Roma patch and it's also got this little luggage tag, which also says Fendi Roma as well but carry this top handle or with its strap and and it just has a really really edgy appeal which I love about this bag. These things combined make the Fendi Mini Peekaboo a great bag for traveling because you can take one bag an extra strap and the Defender which packs down really small and then you've got three or four different ways to wear your bag which is just amazing and I think the way that it transfers from day to night is also really, really cool. So just quickly, I would like to show you what fits in this bag based on what I would usually carry at the most because that's a fair indication of what I would use this bag for. So I've talked a lot about the pros of this bag, but in terms of the cons, there are only a handful of cons associated with this bag in my opinion. One. I mean the price. So when you purchase a Celeria bag, this one was 5'4 and the black one was 5'9. So it had gone up by $400 in less than a year. The thing with these bags is, is that they're known not necessarily to have the best resale value. But in saying that, I do not see them come up on the resale market often at all, if ever. Um, and when they do, they're usually the Napa versions and they're usually pretty beaten up. I hardly ever see Celeria on the resale market. I think Fendi's a brand that you buy it and you keep it. It's not something that you think of as a short-term transaction. It's a lifelong commitment. Um, but these are certainly bags that I would not even think of selling anyway. So the price is a con and I think the price also precludes a lot of people from stepping into the brand because if it's unknown, if it's not popular, if it's not hyped, if you can't sell it, if it doesn't work out for you, then it's a bit of a risk and a bit of an unknown and I think um, that kind of scares people off. In my experience, none of those factors have been a detriment to this bag. One thing when you're carrying this crossbody is that because it sits so nicely against your body because it's so soft, it um, is difficult to get into the things in the back half of the bag. So my advice there is use the back half of the bag as your most secure section. So things that you're not going to access very often, things that you don't want to be um, potentially pinched out of your bag. If somebody is that good, then put them in the back half. And the other thing that I mentioned earlier is literally just the strap. So I love the strap. It works great for me. I'm five, five and a half at all and um, I think it's a great strap except for the fact that it doesn't pivot. You can't have it all but if there was one improvement that I'd ask Fendi to make on this bag it would be to redesign this attachment so that it had a pivot or swivel on it. Okay so I'll show you what fits inside. So here I have my Louis Vuitton mini pochette. I'd use this as a catch-all for things like hand sanitizer, headache tablets, personal items, um, anything that could kind of leak and I'd pop that in the side closest to me because it's something I'm not going to access very often. So you can see here there's still quite a lot of room in that side. Also in that side I would keep my Louis Vuitton six ring key holder because once I have locked the house I am not going to touch those keys until I come home. So they go in the back as well. And my car key is keyless entry. That goes in the back as well. And that pretty much takes up the back half of the bag. You can obviously put more in. So 
you can obviously put more in there's heaps of room but you it will get heavier the more you put in so just something to think about but there's heaps of space in there in the front half of the bag i'm going to put my wallet at the moment i'm carrying my new bottega veneta um, intrachato wallet in lavender i love 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 this little bag this little bag this little wallet um, so that one will sit inside i will also carry my airpod pros and they will go inside there um, look i'm going to take the raincoat i always take that i don't take it out but just showing you earlier i had taken it out so that one will go in as well and this is an iphone 10 so this is a plus size phone and i'm going to put that in along the front of the bag so now you can see that we've got everything inside the bag. There's plenty in there. You can definitely feel the weight. If I wanted to add a pair of sunglasses, I've got my Celine's here. I can just pop them on the top and away we go. Now, if I want to close the bag, the sunnies will have to go in the back pocket. See, like that. So I've got them facing against that beautiful soft leather so they're not going to get scratched. I could take a little um, fabric case, but it's just another thing to worry about. So I'll close the bag up. Um, it's unlikely I would carry that much, but you can see um, you can see some of the um, items there. But really, when you're looking at it, you can just see that because of the angle I'm holding it to the light. But if you look at it like this, it is very, very comfortably carrying all of that. It fits in a continental wallet, but only just. I wouldn't recommend. Um, obviously, if you've got smaller things like card holders, you can fit a couple of those in. A little PM agenda would fit in here quite easily as well. Um, but yeah, if that hopefully gives you a guideline as to what fits based on your essentials. Now, obviously, I have two of these. Would I like more? Absolutely. Um, I'd love it in the blush pink. I'd love it in the lilac. I think that this bag is timeless. I think it is absolutely wearable on every occasion. I think it's beautiful and I think it's got personality. And most importantly, I feel like it is value for money. And when you're spending these kind of dollars on a luxury handbag, you expect a lot and Fendi not only give you amazing customer service, in my experience anyway, and a few people that I have watched videos on recently have all talked about Fendi's customer service. The aftercare from Fendi is fantastic. The ability to have a bag that you like and be able to get it in a color that you love is just such a special offering that Fendi do. Their seasonal styles are amazing. This is not an ad. I am not endorsed by Fendi. I do not get any discounts, but I do get fabulous customer service. And I think it's because I love the brand and hopefully the brand loves me. I'll leave you with some mod shots of me with my favorite Fendi mini peekaboo bags. If you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. If you haven't already, I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. So